Hey, lead guitar players, don't you love it when you hear something like this? It's so awesome. I want to talk today about the simple and fundamental ideas of hammer-ons and pull-offs, how they can help you, and what to think about to make you sound better. Let's check it out. Hey, lead guitar players. Today I want to talk about some hammer-ons and pull-offs, these simple techniques we've seen, but I want to take a little closer look to make sure we're capitalizing on all of these sounds. In the music world, uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs are considered legato techniques. That's why they have the arch over the numbers. That's a musical symbol you'll see in standard notation, not just tab. For us as guitar players, we see the arch on the numbers going up mean hammer-ons, and when the numbers go down on a string, it means pull-offs. And let's take a look at the physical part of those two techniques. On any one string, we can do a hammer-on, and a hammer-on is when the notes go up a string. They have to go by a certain interval, which would be either one fret or more, uh, depending on how far you can reach. Uh, sometimes people use two hands for these kind of things, like uh, Eddie Van Halen. So when we do a standard hammer-on, let's say if we're right here on the fifth fret, we can pluck our normal note, and if we had to play the seventh fret, we would normally just play the seventh fret. When you see an arch over the two notes, that's telling us uh, a legato technique, and for us that means hammer-ons, when it's just the arch. So what that would entail is you pluck the note on the fifth fret, and you're going to use the weight of your third finger to hammer. So you have to make the noise with the finger. Uh, you have to be deliberate, short, and quick about it. When I say quick, I don't mean the time between the two notes, but your intention to deliver the hammer-on. So I want to do it now, I want to do it quickly and intently, like that. And you can hear how much wood you, I'm hitting. So let's try that again, five to seven. That's a whole step, that's two frets. Uh, in music we come across a number of intervals, which are spaces between notes. We want to practice the, uh, the ones we can actually reach with one hand. First and foremost, uh, after the whole step in music, we have half steps. So that would be, in this case, first to second fingers. So you should practice half steps. We just did the whole step. That's the first to third finger. In music, we have an interval called a minor third. That's for us three frets. So some people would use the pinky. We love the pinky. We want to use that as much as we can. Uh, but sometimes it makes more sense to use the third finger. After the minor third, or a three fret space, we have a major third, and that's the four frets. For me, I definitely have to use my pinky on that one. Uh, this type of hammer-on didn't uh, happen a lot in the classic rock in your Clapton, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan realm. Uh, but people like your Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vyse, Alan Holdsworth, oh my gosh, Alan Holdsworth, uh, they would open their hand up more to get some of the bigger spacing. So you can experiment with those ideas. You can do a hammer-on on any string. So I can do it on the B string, the G string, the D, A, or E. Any place, anywhere on the guitar. Um, again, we're just talking right now about guitar technique. We're not talking about what space, uh, what scales to use, or any of those decisions. This is more just a guitar technique um, a tutorial. So we can see um, we'll do any combination. Sometimes you need, uh, you'll do two finger hammer-ons, where you'll do a whole step and then followed maybe by a half step. It's a very common musical situation, so you would do five, seven, eight. And you can do that on any string. And you can just practice one, three, four. That's a very common fingering on the guitar. So I'm just picking on the first string and hammering on the other two notes. The other half of hammer-ons is pull-offs. And they are the same arch, but the numbers go down, descending sound. So in this case, if we had seven to five with the arch, that would be a pull-off. Now, pull-offs are a little different, that you have to prepare both fingers first. You have to know you're gonna do the pull-off before you pull off. So you have to have both fingers set. So when you pluck the note that's on the seventh fret, for instance, you're gonna snap down to make the fifth note activate. So here's seven to five again. And snap off to make the fifth fret make a sound. 
these are two notes. These are two notes in a music scale or anything that we need. And we have to treat them as two notes, um, despite we're doing a different technique to get from one to another. Uh, a great way to accelerate that feel. Uh, the pull-offs uh, have a very tricky feel to them. You can, uh, as we did before, you can do them on each string. Uh, some of you may notice, if you've watched in previous videos uh, in the secret guitar technique of pick blocking, uh, one of the great techniques, uh, one of the great uses of pick blocking is when you pull off on one of the inner strings, say your G string. If you notice on my right hand down here, I'm going to land on the B string after I do. And that's going to help mute that B string. So when I do a pull off, I get a nice clean sound. Uh, let me see if I, I don't know if I can demonstrate. Like there's a bad example. Because right now that B string is making noise and I don't want it to. I just want that G string. So I use the pick blocking to have a nice clean pull off. So every string I land on, and the, the cool thing about this is when you can do it on the B string, of course, you'll land on the E string with your pick. But when you do the E string, there is no string to pick block onto. And that's okay because there's no string to accidentally hit. It works out perfect. One of the things I love um, is a trill. A trill is a rapid hammer on and pull off back and forth. So this is a great concentrate way to practice hammer ons and pull offs. Um, when I grew up, uh, started playing guitar in the 80s, it was a big thing to play a lot of trills and hammer-ons and pull-offs. So it was nice to practice, say if I pull off, I just need to pick once to start it. And then I pull off to make five. Now I can hammer on back to seven, pull off, hammer, pull off, hammer, pull off, hammer, pull off. And I want to own each one of these notes. And I slightly speed it up. at a pretty fast pace, then slowly slow it down. It's very musical and it's a very good exercise for your hand, your dexterity, and your grip. You'll notice with a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs, you'll have to let the thumb over the top of the neck go away and come pull it behind the fretboard. Um, I talk about this as the pre-Van Halen, post-Van Halen grips on your left hand. There's a lot of great reasons your thumb can come up, but hammer-ons and pull-offs is probably not one of them. So I often bring that down, and that helps facilitate my hand. If I have my hand up like this, I can trill, but my wrist is really compromised, and I don't have a lot of spacings. Um, so if you do ever want to stretch out, you have to pull your thumb down to make that happen. So once you practice uh, one trill, you can practice, I call like back and forth trills, uh, where you pull off between, uh, say, the third fret, if I'm on the fifth, seventh, and eighth frets. So maybe I'll pull off and on on the seventh fret, hammer on and off, and then do the same with the pinky on the eighth, and then just back and forth. Speed it up. Slow it down. Jack Butler knows what I'm doing here. You can practice these with any fingering. So you can do one, two, and four, because in music we have half steps and whole steps. Two whole steps, that's the um, post Van Halen grip. Oops, sorry. There you go. Of course, you can do all downs, all pull offs all hammer-ons and combinations. Mix them all up, all the different groups of any scale patterns you know. Of course, I'm adding a couple little slides in there to help transition from section of, of scale fragments. One of the important things I have to remind my students, uh, we always take these for granted, and something I've been seeing for years that my students do is they change the musical part of this when they encounter hammer-ons and pull-offs, and that's the wrong thing to do. If you are faced with the fifth and seventh frets as eighth notes, sounding like this, one and two and three and four and, 
and you saw a uh, arch symbol going between seven to five, that means you're gonna pull off from the seventh to the fifth fret. It should not change the sound of your idea like this. Here it comes. There's still eighth notes. When I tell a student to do this, they often go from picking, come back to picking here, and I say, okay, do pull-offs, and they do this. And I was like, that's a completely different idea musically. You have to have control of your hands, your brain, and the two of them talking together to make sure that stuff stays put. Um, here's a pretty ridiculous example. But if I do my rocking version of... and I do it with hammer-ons and pull-offs, it should sound... It should not sound like... like that. So just keep that in mind as you're playing. Are you playing triplets? Are you playing 16th notes, 8th notes? That They all factor into how the sound of your hammer-ons and pull-offs um, will come across to a listener. It's a big difference. Uh, you always want to change your gears rhythmically and practice that stuff. So again, we talked about hammer-ons and pull-offs, two techniques we've always seen. Um, they happen in a number of capacities. You want to make sure you practice them with open strings. Uh, sometimes we have a lot of stuff that will do double pull-offs, for instance, into an open string. Uh, we know familiar songs that use back and forth hammer-ons, pull-offs on open strings. You know that one, name that song. Um, and of course, I mean, everyone does these, whether it's Hendrix, um, Alex Lyson, A lot of people use these things, they're so cool. Practice them, use them, don't overuse them, um, but they really help flesh out your solos. They offer a lot of nice ways to connect your notes and add a lot of nice sound. Uh, another bonus I love about them is they can and, uh, allow you to play a little faster without the punching bag effect of rapid picking. So if I was picking, just a, a simple little six note fragment, I can play it with hammer-ons and pull-offs, or hammer-ons in this case, uh, instead of just picking it. Sometimes the picking gain a little much. So use it to your creative taste, season to taste, enjoy it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, check out LeeGuitarWorkshop.com. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you around, Lee Guitar Players. Rock on.